Louisville's theorem is an incredibly important theorem in complex analysis and mathematics, but physicists and applied mathematicians may find it a little bit boring and may not understand really why it's that important. But the pure mathematicians really do love it, and it is actually quite an important theorem in the whole grand scheme of mathematics when it comes to doing proofs of other things. So we're going to cover it. This is a complex analysis by a physicist. Let's discuss Louisville's theorem. So Louisville's theorem is relatively straightforward. If we have a complex function and it's entire and bounded in the complex plane, then that function must be constant. I'll say that one more time a little bit uh, easier. If f of z is entire and bounded in the complex plane, then f of z must be constant. And really, it gives us these two things, okay? And so you can see, I kind of said, so what? Well, it tells us well that the modulus of our function centered at some z0, uh, or evaluated at some z0, is less than or equal to m, which is just going to be a positive constant. And then the derivative is just this mr per r, okay? We could just change that to be to be m. But, you know, this is relatively straightforward. And so why is this Louisville's theorem so important, you might ask? Well, it basically allows us to prove, you know, other theorems, which I'll briefly discuss at the end. But it also gives us a good way to check our integrals. For example, if we're going to use the Cauchy integral formula, okay, and we have a, an entire function, that's bounded, we should expect to see a constant out, okay? And that's really why uh, we're going over this right now, but it is important that you know this theorem is here and that, that it exists, okay? So let's do a quick proof of it because the proof is relatively straightforward. To do the proof, you're gonna to need to recall the extended form of the Cauchy integral formula, and if you forgot it, this is what it is. It basically, if f of z is analytic inside and on a simple closed curve that is positively oriented and z naught sits inside the curve, then we can use this following formula to evaluate an integral or, you know, a function or, or, or whatever it is. And so we're going to use this for the first derivative uh, back over here for this, uh, this f prime case, okay? And so uh, just to uh, write this out, uh, f prime of z0 that looks like bracket notation, uh, is equal to 1 on 2 pi i, integral over a simple closed curve, f of z on z minus z naught squared uh, dz. Okay, and so we're going to take this, and now we're going to parameterize, well, now that we have this, we're going to move on to the next step. The next step is to parameterize this. And we're going to parameterize this with our simple closed curve being a circle of radius r at the origin of the complex plane. So c is going to be z plus r e to the i theta for theta on bounds 0 to 2 pi. And when we implement that, we're going to get the following f prime of z naught is equal to 1 on uh, 2 pi i integral on bound 0 to 2 pi, okay, uh, f of z plus r e to the i theta on r e to the i theta squared time, uh, times i r e to the i theta uh, d theta. And we can simplify it to get the following here. Okay, so now from this point, we can take the modulus, or we can, we can take the modulus of what we have here, of, of f prime of z at z naught, and we know that's going to have to be less than or equal to something because because this is a modulus here, and I'll, I'll, I'll detail where this comes in. But what we really are going to get is we're going to get a 1 on 2 pi integral on bound 0 to 2 pi, and then we're going to be taking the modulus of this inner part, f 
z plus r e to the i theta on r e to the i theta and and we're taking the modulus of this thing right here okay now when we do that all right we're going to get the following out and so really we just need to take and figure out what the modulus of this function in the numerator of our integrand is going to be okay and if you think about it well the modulus uh you know down here actually it should be a uh, an inequality messed that up but it, this knocked out our imaginary component here and if you think about it we're just going to get z squared plus uh if you think about this, we're just going to be left with the, the real parts here, which is mainly going to include this radius right here, okay? And uh, in doing that, you can think of it that we're just going to be adding constants together, okay? At the end, at the end of all this, we're just going to be adding uh, real constants together, all right? And so what we're going to end up getting after all of this is we can just basically call this numerator a constant. So we're going to get 1 on 2 pi integral on bound 0 to 2 pi, we're going to call that constant m and just define it to be a positive constant uh, on r, which is our radius, which we know has to be constant because that's, that's our bound, uh, d theta, okay? We have no theta dependence in this, so uh, when we evaluate this integral, the 2 pi is just going to get chopped out and we're just going to be left with this thing, uh, you know, and actually it should be a modulus. I can't believe I messed that up. Um, but we're just going to be left with m on r, which is just some constant on our radius, which if you recall, that's what the theorem says. It says that the modulus of our first derivative at z naught should be less than or equal to some positive constant m per r, okay? This doesn't prove the full theorem, though. This just proves a part of it. If we want to, all right, let's just give a little aside here. We can just take uh, the limit as r goes to infinity on 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 this guy right here this f prime z naught and well you can see pretty quickly this is just going to blow out to infinity which is going to give us which is going to just going to give us that this thing uh goes to zero okay it's just going to give us that it goes to zero which proves the point that uh you know mod f of z naught is going to be less than or equal to uh, not zero, uh, not zero, uh, just our constant m, okay, and, 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 and that really just proves, proves the theorem right there, okay, this is sort of a sloppy way of doing it, again, this is complex analysis by a physicist, um, so we took the sloppy route to getting here, but at the end of the day, this proves the, uh, this proves the Louisville theorem, and like I said, this is really important and really useful to us in complex analysis because basically if we evaluate a integral, uh, you know, that is entire and then is bounded and we use, you know, the Cauchy integral formula, we should expect to see, a, a, you know, a constant out, okay? And, and, and that is very useful. This also proves a number of other theorems. You can go to the Wikipedia page. I'll link it in the description down below. And there's a whole colliery section. But one of the most important ones that this proves is the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, so there, there's a ton of interesting proofs with this. Again, the pure mathematicians are the ones that are really super interested in this. From the physics and applied mathematics perspective, okay, um, at least from my point of view, this is really just important, uh, you know, obviously for, for the proofs because we wouldn't have any of, you know, what we have in physics or applied mathematics without those proofs. But it's really important uh, or useful to us to just make sure that we're evaluating our integrals correctly, okay? So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. If you found this video helpful or you liked it, feel free to give it a like and check out other videos if you want to see some more from me. But uh, thank you very much for watching. These videos are supported by your viewership. And just by viewing the video, you're supporting me, you're supporting my work, you're supporting this channel. So thank you very much. I do very much appreciate it. And I hope to see you again next time. Thanks again.